Ladies and gents, hello and welcome. Thank you very much for joining the Arm Training channel. Today, I want to talk about the catch and what it actually means. I'm not going to be able to cover everything, but recently in one of the live sessions I did with one of my athletes online when he was on the water and I coached him remotely, we talked about how to catch and how to do it. One of the greatest misconceptions that I grew up with as an athlete was that people told me, hey, you should catch towards the bow. So, towards the bow in this direction. But I thought, how on earth should this be possible? You are traveling towards the bow, and as you approach the water at the catch, how would you like to catch towards the bow? It is impossible. What this does, if you try to catch towards the bow, is that you extend forward extensively too much, and that corrupts your upper body position. So this is something you shouldn't do as well. So the way it works is that there's a tiny time slot between pulling the boat and pushing it away. Or if you want to put it in conventional terms, between sliding forward and sliding backward. And that narrow, tiny time slot should be used to do precisely what this athlete from Portugal here is doing, placing the blade in the water. See this? He does it a bit with the upper body, but it's almost unnoticeable. That only, that only works if your blade, as you, approach the, as you approach the catch, is already very close, very close to the water. The closer it is, the smoother this entire transaction was going to be. Now, as you approach the catch here, there will be a phase where you feel pressure on the back of your blade. So coming from this side, right here. If you go forward to the catch, it's going to hit the rear side of your, of your blade. And that is going to cause a lack of stability. It's actually going to make everything instable, especially if you rely with your body weight that your oar handles will stabilize your body. And that is always the case if you try to reach forward extra. This is when I refer to have light hands. This is what, um, where, where if you have light hands, you don't need the oar handles to stabilize you. At the catch, it pays off a hundred times. Now, as, as your blades go into the water, you kind of have to match the current boat speed because that's essentially the water speed that passes, how, at, at which speed the water passes your boat. So you prepare, the, you prepare the blade and then you kind of have to cheat. You have to get it into motion. You see, there is no such thing as putting the blade into the water and then starting the drive. It is utopias. The blade has to adapt to the speed of the motion. You can try it out, you know, drive a motor launch or drive in a motorboat and just put your blade in the water. If you want to have a smooth, splashless connection, then you need to adapt to the speed of the water. Otherwise, you're going to break the boat and you don't want to do that. So here, this athlete adapts it perfectly. I mean, it's, this is a low steady state piece, but it's still very well done, at least from a blade work point of view. And then the next most important thing is not to go deeper than you have to. And for me, this is what makes a quick catch. A quick catch is nothing that you can, that you can do on purpose. A quick catch, in my humble opinion, is something that has a lot to do with how you position your body. So don't dip forward at the catch to get more reach. Um, don't cramp your arms the moment you want to try to start the drive. Make sure your back is ready. He, this athlete is very well positioned, but not 100% perfect, but well positioned. And now the most important thing is when you get your blades into the water, don't get it too deep. Get it just underneath the water surface. I mean, he's got Randall foils on top. You see this right here? So it, the rain foils create a little edge on the top of the blade that prevent the blade from going too deep into the water. And what this does is essentially stabilizes your blade at the catch so that you don't have that typical down and back up travel, which usually takes up at least a fifth to a quarter of the entire effective stroke length you've got. So, the reason why he is able to connect so quickly is because his blade don't, don't go too deep into the water. That has a lot to do with his positioning of the body 
and it has a lot to do with that with the design change made to his blades so that they cannot go too deep and now he's already in a vertical stable position vertically stable position and he's got the horizontal lock so now what he did he changed from feeling pressure on the back side of his blades which he was able to reduce because he put the blade into the water with a bit of motion and now he's creating a water bubble so to speak in front of his blade I'm, I'm not trying to be scientific i'm trying to be super simple straightforward so that everybody can understand you can reduce the back pressure on that side of the blade and here the rear side you can't see of that blade by adapting to the speed of water the problem is if your blade is too far away from the water vertically speaking at the point where you actually want to start to place it you miss a lot of water and this is why some coaches prefer to catch towards the bow so you try to get some extra reach but that compromises your upper body position again so it's a lose-lose situation as you approach the catch you really want to make sure you are as close to the water as you can be so that there's almost no work to be done a quick catch is a catch with a very short task list that in my humble opinion is a quick catch a quick catch doesn't mean push hard with your legs be quick no there is nothing quick about the catch the catch is something very slow it takes time and it takes a lot of feeling doesn't matter if it's a stroke with 12 16 18 25 30 or 45 you always have to take your time at the catch to connect first if there's no connection and just brutalizing the water the boat's not going to be as fast as it could be so whenever you want to go for a quick and hard catch <laughs> don't waste your time it costs too much energy make sure the blade sits nicely just underneath the water surface where it would naturally float there's there's a nice drill you go to the catch and at that you can only do this in a double maybe in a single if you're proficient enough and you let the blades float you square the blades let them float and reduce the vertical load on your oar handle as much as possible where does it float naturally this is where it almost should be throughout the entire drive so the blade tells you where to be anyway the problem is that because the blade doesn't have a top edge unless you put randall foils on top it goes too deep at the catch and goes back up and that every time it goes down and up and down and up you lose a bit of that water bubble in front of it you can try it out so put your hands in the water and then try to get a grip of it every time you add some vertical motion the the blade kind of wobbles through the water but it doesn't have the same solid lock you have to consider that ultimately we don't want to bring the blade through the water our main intention is to lock the blade in the water as if we were sitting on a skateboard put our hands on a concrete and push ourselves away from the current position that is the ultimate idea it is a bit utopious because there will always be what we refer to as slip slip is when a water uh, when a blade moves through the water and not the boat past the blade the slip can also be defined in various ways so you can define say okay there's less than two newtons um, so less than two newtons of load on the blade so everything on, from zero newton to two newton on the blade is what we consider to be this, the catch slip drive and the same with the release so at the end of the drive this would be then the release slip drive where the blade has less than two newton of load and we consider this but you can name any number and this is just a random number anything would work the idea is to take your time at the catch so that you can lock your blades in vertically stabilized to the max with the help of rain foils or perfect technique or both and then propel the boat with your legs patiently holding your upper body in place so that you see the oars start to bend now and now it's a very good position to start to accelerate the boat you can see the bend of the oar and the oar shaft what that around perpendicular and this is where you can generate the most speed when if not now would you like to accelerate so my question is why do a lot of people waste so much energy here at the catch if the blade is pointing more away from the boat than forward and i think the reason is that a lot of the a lot of a lot of us coaches used to learn technique when we still had super soft material so my coaches learned to row when we had wooden oars and wooden oars had to be loaded significantly at the catch 
that was the only time you had sufficient grip on them so you could actually store kinetic energy because these things would bend endlessly. But the carbon doesn't bend a lot and the boats we have today are much stiffer than what we had back then. So I think this is kind of, yeah, it's an old way of rowing which was very good for the old material we had but hey, equipment has moved on. Our technique should move on as well. And if you stabilize your blades, watch that white ring here. Vertically, you have pretty much a solid hold all the way to the finish. That's why the catch is so important that you take your time. And I'm referring mostly to the blade work today. I'm not referring to how to position your body. I did a different video on that. I'm going to link it in the description below where I talk about the, the true catch. There's no hard catch. The catch is something where you take your time and there's a good catch is actually a slow catch with very little things to do. If you want to work with me, go to armtraining.com. You can join the Zoom live sessions either from your boat with a camera mounted inside or from your biro or a linear erg. My speciality is training, planning and technique work. If you want to work with me, go to armtraining.com. It's a good time to subscribe now. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye-bye.